Eric doesn't have much time to finish the intake tubes that feed our supercharged Duramax. We're in a hurry to get them up to Sean at Empire Fab. And I check in on Matt's progress on the intake manifold and nitrous placement. Wait, did I say nitrous? I sure did. I need NOS. I need NOS. <laughs> Bings built, protected by Amsoil, with support from Roadster Shop and Nitto. So the new printed intake is on its way to Sean right now. All he needs to finish the hood cut is our intake tubes. And these intake tubes are a little funky now that we've changed some dimensions. So to help me, I'm gonna whip up some CAD of some jigs, try to make these things as accurate as I can. Okay, so I just finished up a fitment jig for these tubes. So Matt shot me over the isolated CAD of just the tube. They're gonna end up being mirrored parts, but they can share the same jig. So what I put together here in teal is a very basic tabbed and slotted steel fixture. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these out on the torch mate. This will key right into itself, weld up real easy. And this is gonna serve as my truck. You usually wanna have the vehicle there as your fitment, but I don't have that option and we don't have a lot of time, so I have to replicate it with what I can cut out on the torch mate. The mandrel bends that we got are very tight radius and the pieces don't actually give you any straight. Uh, typically when you get a mandrel bend you'd have some straight and that's good for clamping and referencing and it makes it all around easier. But in our case I had to go through and essentially make um, some soft jaws. So they're 3D printed soft jaws that'll probably be destroyed by the time I finish these cuts. But it's gonna help me a lot in locating everything. So. This little piece I came up with here is, is pocketed uh, mostly for speed. So this thing, I wanna get it printed out in a day. We gotta get this thing off to Sean as soon as possible. And so this will be support material, really low density, and I can go in and slide this mandrel bend through and essentially lock into the location or the angle that I wanna cut and trust that it's gonna be what I need. So these should be finished up. I'm gonna go cut out those pieces on the torch mate and I gotta get these things made and off to Sean. doubling up on clamps here and see if I can work the mandrel bent piece through the jaws without actually moving the jaws. So mid cut, I put a little red Sharpie mark on there on the bottom tangent. So once it was done cutting, I could kind of get an idea of just how square that cut is. So that's actually better than I anticipated considering how old the saw is. So now, now I have this path that the bandsaw just went through, and this is gonna be my zero. So I'm starting out with the bigger of the two cuts. Now this thing needs to be 76.3 degrees. So with this crazy setup, I'm gonna show you how I calculate it to cut at 76.3 or as close as I can. Okay, so what I have drawn here is how I'm, gonna, I'm going to get this existing piece down to my needed angle of 76.3. So I grab the backside edge using the table as a reference, and that's 80.3. So I know that on the opposite side, if everything was perfectly square, that would be 80.3 as well, but it's not. This is a tilt table, and I had to tilt the saw to get it to cut how I wanted on the mandrel bend. So, so that 0.5 degree tilt that I've got down here needs to be counted for in whatever I'm doing. Essentially, I'm at 80.3, I need to get to 76.3. I'm taking off four degrees, but my blade is already at 0.5, so that's coming off. So I'm actually cutting off 3.5 degrees. And to get to that, I essentially took my angle gauge, zeroed it on my first zero cut, hammered it out until it hit 3.5, locked it in place. So now I'm gonna run this cut and it should be right at 76.3 or as close as I'm gonna get on this saw. Thin wall stainless is notorious for grabbing onto the bandsaw and spinning in place. So you could clamp harder, but then you run the risk of deforming your tube. So what I like to do is I'll set up my tube. I'm starting with my little cut here. And I'll take a machine piece of Delrin that's slightly smaller than the ID of my tube. 
go ahead and insert that guy. And so now I can go in and I can clamp super hard onto the tube and not run the risk of deforming it. So that way I won't spin when I cut this guy. Jig is ready, straight pieces are cut out. So I've got all my little pieces here, the big bend, my little slice, all the straights. So the jig turned out really well. I did forget one thing, which was the HD clamp. So I'd ended up giving this guy a little chamfer. It sits in great now. So these pieces, I checked fitment, looks good. Pulled it apart, cleaned it, scotch brighted it. I'm only gonna tack it for now, but I gotta get to it because I got a whole other one to make and get these off the shown. All right, now that these are all tacked up, I'm gonna get them sent off to Sean. I know he's pretty busy that all we've tasked him with, but at some point he's gonna be waiting on these to finalize the hood cut. He could even be waiting now. So we'll get these on off to him and we'll go ahead and move on to the bed. Since you guys been here? By a while, I mean like a week and a half. But in that time, so now what we have is we have the metals cut and the bottoms broke for the firewall. On the driver's side, we already have the hole and the holes needed to uh, for the braces to come across and then the master cylinders and steering. Um, one of the other things we did is we got some space claims of these being the valve covers that are gonna be made for this. And so what we did is just transferred them onto the firewall on both sides right now. So from what I'm told, none of this is gonna get seen back here. So all our design will just be on this part, playing in to what you see from like there over. We did the kickback pocket for the uh, intercooler fittings, which is gonna be back in that area. And then on the inside, you can see the firewall and you can see the kickback on the recess. We have the main part of the transmission tunnel, which right now is two pieces. This will actually get welded and metal finished as one piece. We did a bunch of shrinking back here to bring the back of it down around the end of the Allison's. And then the driveline tunnel is what we have right here. And we gave it a little bit more clearance than they wanted because I think they're gonna go with a slightly bigger drive shaft. So we stepped up the size of it, brought it up a little high, and that's what we're gonna go there. And then we're gonna start welding these in today or tomorrow, and then gotta make these little closeout pieces. So this is what we have so far on the cab. Once it gets welded in, we'll trim and clean out that back corner piece. And that's pretty much the update right now. Waiting on our core support to get back here. Once we get that in, we can start designing and finishing up these front engine bay tubs. Once we have those made, I'll lay out the designs on the tubs and the firewall at the same time. There's no point in designing the firewall now because I'm not sure on how the tubs are gonna lay out until we have the core support. Adios. Peace out. So I wanna see the intake manifold. That's what I wanna see. Ooh, the whole engine. That's good looking. How are you we're doing, Gail? I'm doing good. Oh I think we're doing God, good man. here, too. Ah, I like the nitrous. That's looking good. Got some sensors in the back here. Yes, sir, yeah. we do. All we got sensors, and we got more sensors, and we got more sensors, <laughs> and more sensors. That thing is looking real nice. We're still dialing the inlet in a little bit mm -hmm. as far as the, some of the styling goes. Yes. The rest of it is, is good to go. These are basically wrenching cavities, right? That's correct. And then the other bolts, the lower bolts, 
Well, that one's There's out some, here. Yeah, that, that one's out here. Yep. What's that flange thickness? 340, 8.636 millimeters. Oh, get real precise. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that looks good. So this manifold drops on, we've got a dowel. Mm -hmm. We've got a dowel here, and we've got a dowel here. Mm -hmm. Of course, the factory has two independent manifolds. Yes. Each of which are doweled. Yes. But we can't dowel those sides. You can or only you'll dowel never, one side. You'll never get the, the manifold on. Yeah. So we've doweled this side. That gives you fore and aft. It gives you... Mm -hmm. a, it rotational. It, it gives it, you some this vertical. Way. Yeah. Yep. So that'll lock yeah. us into place, and then you can bolt down the manifold. Right now, it is designed to use the factory sealing method, which is RTV. Yeah, I gotcha, but I hate RTV. <laughs> yeah. Is there any way to get an O-ring in there? There's always a way. Yeah. Joshua, intake manifold to cylinder head. Is there a squeeze gap? We need to Look really confirm at, that. Yeah. Yes, to make sure there is a... It's one of the things we do with the cast aluminum oil pans as well. The factory uses our RTV. It's machine placed. So what happens is you place the RTV on the surface, then you bring the other piece to it, and it extrudes out. But there is a... Wait a minute. That's an RTV model. Yeah, there, there, it, there is the RTV right there as is placed. But the squeeze gap would be a feature right here. Aha. Okay. Here we are. That's the squeeze gap right there. Yep. So as it extrudes, it, it comes out and hangs. Well, if it went inside and hung like that, pieces would break off and the engine would inhale the pieces. So the squeeze gap, there, there you see some material still some left. Squeezed, yep. Yeah, but it, it's not hanging in the wind. We either do a squeeze gap or we O-ring our manifold. Okay, we'll make that happen. Yeah. You know, we do our own lower crankcase for these engines, and that gets put on it at GM as well. But this is not, uh, that is not getting put on at GM. All right, thank you, Joshua. Cool. So are you, you're good with a squeeze gap in RTV? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, as long as we deposit the RTV accurately. So we're going in with an elemental two stages of nitrous. That's correct. All right? At, le at least it's better than one. <laughs> okay, in terms of the nitrous outlets. So we've got a 45 degree tip mm -hmm. on the end of these guys. They're, mm -hmm. they're slightly angled, yeah. which... which uh, gets us past the charge air cooler and the manifold. The way we distribute the nitrous concerns me. I'd almost be wanting to spray it that way, that way, shorten up the nozzles, first yep. of all. Yeah, and we can do, we can clock them. We're drilling this aperture, aren't we? Uh, we're gonna work with uh, Mr. Thermos and he can make us whatever we want. Damn. So he's talking about Mike Thermos. Mike Thermos is the godfather of nitrous as far as I'm concerned. Uh, he's a cat almost as old as me. Uh, he may be a little older. Uh, I wouldn't wish that on anybody, but it, it's possible. And he's the guy who came up with nitrous oxide systems. But he's still got a smaller company. Yeah, he's down in Huntington Beach, and he is taking care of us here. Anyhow, I, w I wanted to use this cavity up here to disperse the nitrous into, to get a uniformity cylinder to cylinder. Rather than a jet down some individual ports. Well, you get some nice plenum mixing going effectively, on. Effectively, you've got eight ports. Mm -hmm. They don't come up to the surface, but yep. we've only got four nozzles and we're gonna only run on two and then the other two. If we're just running on two, uh, which two are they? This one and that one? or the inner ones, or the outer ones, and then the inner ones. <laughs> the possibilities are almost or, endless. Or one on the... Yeah. <laughs> Does the manifolds look good? Does placement look good? Yeah, I think so, especially okay. if, if you're going to run two and then four. Okay. I'd want them regionally to, to be very similar. So we could keep moving forward as far as manufacture of the mm -hmm. manifold, mm -hmm. and then dial in length, yeah. angle... Uh, yeah, can the, we do a nozzle, nozzle, can we do a nozzle with an outlet on either side? I, I would much I, smaller, I don't, but I don't see why not. Okay. Yeah, I just don't want to shoot straight down, of course. Mm -hmm. 
But if we can do, do something up in these cavities, up in that whole area, up to the flange, we might do short nozzles and just spray horizontally and let it mix more uniformly. That's what I'm looking for. And let's look at a cross section again. Mm -hmm. And you'll see that nozzle and see yeah. how we just, we sneak past our O-rings there. I see that, the little angle. We talked about uh -huh, that we got the a little other day. Angle. So right here. That's, that's happy. So this is. I'd be, I'd be up here. I'd be up here probably. So this gray feature right here is this flange sure. on our heat exchanger. Yeah, I'm, I'm and there. And what we're going to do is we're going to come and uh, we'll machine indicate the heat in and we'll, yeah, we'll machine the flange. that for our nozzles to penetrate through. Yeah. We're not going to touch the lower manifold, but the upper manifold will have the boss, the threading, mm -hmm. and we'll pop through there. So right here is one of those clearance bosses. Mm -hmm. It's almost like right about this elevation, I'd be spraying laterally off each side of the nozzle. Probably. How do you want to handle that if we've got, you know, like, so if we spray you, laterally you, well, this, you way have this way, to, you have to clock them. Yeah. yeah. Is this one going to impinge on that? Is that what That's you're worried That's what I was about? worried about. I think it's going to, certainly to yep. some small extent. Yeah. I don't know that that's going to be a huge problem. It depends on how it dispels, how it, you know, what does the plume look like? Yeah. I don't expect the plume to be this uniform well, we plume. Can, we can try to maybe dial a little bit of that in, in mm -hmm. the nozzle shape, mm -hmm. but we've got a very short distance to deal with, so we probably can't get yeah. too much control. The problem with what I'm asking for is clocking the nozzle, and it's pipe thread. Yeah. So yeah. it's always a, a, a bear when you're trying to clock pipe thread. You can see our thermocouple popping through right there. Yeah, that'll tell us a hell of a lot about what we're doing there. I think it looks pretty badass. I like, done, I like the looks of the deal. We've done a bit of styling on the upper manifold to kind of oh, tie to, in oh, a little bit. Oh, to pick up the blower. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's sweet. That really looks good. Yeah. And also, that that's also an area with uh, relatively thin thin wall kind yeah. of spread out here. Yeah. So that's so, like 200 wall in this region. So we add those styling so it ribs balloon, on there. Turn into a and balloon. And suddenly it's stiff. Yeah, very. So the other thing that we are going to have is yeah. we're going to tie this inlet mm -hmm. into our FIAD. So okay. there will be a support out here tied into that it's kind of FIAD structural. bracket assembly. And that's to help support the, that the will, whole thing, that's, the bending yeah, it's, moment it's on the belt. It's twofold. It, it, gives us our pickup location yep. for our tensioner, mm -hmm. and it's gonna help with exactly what you just said, which yeah. is, you know, we want a lot of tension on this belt Indeed. To, to grip this pulley, Yes, but that does put a big bending moment on this whole you know, I, inlet assembly. There's structural integrity in this blower case till hell won't have it. We're gonna come through here in the back of the manifold mm -hmm. with some fittings that we're gonna make. Yeah, how about the O-ring groove there? That's right Where's it at? there. Oh, we're good. Yeah. This recess is in here so that we could push those fittings towards the front as mm -hmm. much as possible mm -hmm. and gain firewall clearance. Firewall clearance. And firewall clearance so that we're not running hard 90s, we're running... Soft 90s, soft 90s. yeah. Yeah, radiused 90s. Yep, there they are. Yeah, that looks a lot sweeter. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we're gonna make our own fitting in here. These are nice uh, Satrob fittings. Mm -hmm. They sent us the CAD for this. Yeah, uh, so what's the ID? Fittings. What's the ID of the fitting? You know, we, we want to push some water through there. That is 15 and a half millimeters. Give it to me in thousands. <laughs> 610. Mm, five, uh, shy five, five just eights. Just shy of five eighths. Mm. This thing looks really good. Uh, let's ship it. All right. All right, thank you. Those, those three words. Let's ship it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See you guys later. In the next episode, we start fabricating the articulating bed. It's about time.